Welcome students. Today we will be discussing about the biomechanics of swimming and swimming injuries. Background, shoulder, knee and back are the most common area of injury in the aquatic sports, uh, which means shoulder 40% involved, knee 30%, the back 20% and others 10%. Higher level athlete train up to 20 to 40 hours a week. You can log over 1 lakh strokes should shoulder revolution in a single year. Introduction to the biomechanics. Swimming relies on propulsion through the water using both the upper and lower limbs. Approximately 90% of propulsion is generated by the upper limbs. The forward propulsive forces must overcome the drag force of the water. Therefore, when the swimming front crawl freestyle, the swimmer tries to maintain a horizontal position as possible. If the head and shoulders are high in the water and the hips and legs are lower, or there is an excessive side to side movement, there is an increased drag. In freestyle, butterfly, and backstroke, there are two phases of the stroke, the pull through and recovery. In simple terms, the pull through involves adduction and inter uh, internal rotation of the shoulder as the elbow flexes and the extends. The recovery phase involves abduction and external rotation of the shoulder, again followed by elbow flexion and then extension. In all four competitive swimming strokes, Swimmers do not simplify pull the arm straight through the water. We will be discussing the, all the strokes details wise with the biomechanics later on. For example, pull through is S shaped in freestyle. Not all of the underwater phase of the stroke contributes to propulsion. In all strokes, the beginning of propulsion or catch point begin approximately one third of the way through the underwater phase. This represents the arm position where the elbow is above the hand. Understanding swimming biomechanics can aid stroke prevention, pre efficiency, and minimize the risk of injury. Moving on to the anatomy. There are the primary muscles which are used for all the strokes that are deltoid, pectorals, posterior deltoid, certus anterior, triceps, latips and dorsi and lower limb, quadriceps, hip stabilizers, glutes, hamstrings, etc. And in the upper body, sternocleidomastoid, pectoralis minor, major, obliques, reactus, hellosaurus, rectus abdominals, scalene, trapezius, and etc. The secondary muscles are the trapezius, biceps, upper abdominals, lower abdominals and the calf muscles. What muscle groups are developed in general? Core abdominal and lower back muscles, deltoid and shoulder muscles, forearm muscles, upper back muscles, gluteals and hamstring. Here as you can see in the figure, the front row, the green part is usually the glutes, triceps are used in the front crawl. In backstroke, the shoulders, deltoids are used. In breaststroke, the quadriceps are used majorly, as you can see in the yellow one. And in the butterfly, you can see the traps are involved. And for all the stroke, there's a black line. As you can see, abdominals, sternocleidomastoid, extensors, and etc. Moving on, to the freestyle and the backstroke. Core abdominal and obliques helps in rotating the torso for a longer stroke, which requires less energy. Hip flexors are used to maintain a steady kick, forearm, tricep, shoulder, deltoid, abdominals, gluteus, and upper back are used. The butterfly. Core abdominal and lower back muscles lift the body out of the water to breathe. And gluteus keeps the legs moving as one like a dolphin. Trapezius, forearm, gluteals, abdominals, 
are also used. Here you can see in the figure the swimmer doing the butterfly stroke just like the dolphin. The torso is in the S shape as you can see. Now moving on to the breast stroke. Pectoral and latissimus dorsi muscles are used to pull water with your arms inward. Gluteus and quadriceps snap your legs together to kick. The pectoral, pectoralis, dorsi, forearm, gluteus, hamstring and quadriceps muscles are used in the breast stroke. Here we are discussing what, which muscles group are involved in the strokes. In breast stroke, earliest form of the swimming. First stroke to be used in the competitive event is the breast stroke. Here you can see the freestyle and the front crawl. It is named by an Australian Richard Cavill. Up and down kicks with alternative arm recovery. The butterfly was discovered by 1930s American David Amberser and Jack Sleck. It's bilateral over the water arm recovery coupled with a dolphin kick. You can see the backstroke or streamlining. It is also discovered by American David Burkhoff. In 1988, the backstroke swimmers can go faster by doing underwater butterfly kicks than swimming on the surface, known as streamlining. Streamline form is a swimming technique that is used underwater in every stroke. At the start of the race or on a turn, consists of dolphin flutter kick to create least amount of resistance to help the swimmer propel as far as they can. No arm movement allowed, biceps beside ears or elbow behind head. 15 meter is maximum range for backstroke, freestyle and butterfly. Breaststroke is an exception with one pull through and one breaststroke kick allowed. Breaking the rules means a total disqualification from the competition. The flexibility. In order to achieve more range of motion or a wider and a longer pull through to increase propulsion, no. however, hyperflexibility of the shoulder joint can increase the likelihood of the injury. Coordination. To progress through the phase of different stroke efficiently could greatly increase the speed of many swimmers. Also tend to count the numbers to paddles it takes to swim a lap and try to decrease that number whilst achieving a faster timing. Endurance. Swimming utilizes muscle throughout the body, especially large muscle groups such as pectoralis, quadriceps, the core muscle, abdominals, which can tire individual after prolonged use. Stamina is important to maintain posture and also maintain muscle firing rate. As we all know that endurance is the key, which keeps the swimmer out of the fatigue and get tired early. Starting with the biomechanics of swimming, there are generally four phases of, for all the strokes. First, the entrance. Second, the pull through. Third, the exit. Fourth is the recovery. Entrance is the phase where the shoulder flexion and elbow is fully extended and when the hand initially contact with water body surface. Pull through is the movement of the arm, hand parallel to the longitudinal axis of the body from the point of the contact of the water to the hips for the purpose of propulsion. Transitioning to the third stage, the hand exists the water body around the hip region. Recovery phase where the arm and hand moves from the hip to the front of the trunk where it prepares for re-entry into the water. Here are the swimming strokes. As we can see, there are four strokes. Freestyle, breaststroke, freestyle, 
butterfly. Also, the backstroke. Biomechanics of the freestyle stroke. In freestyle, the arm enters the water and fully extends forward in front of the shoulders, which then transition into early pull through where the arms begin to move backward. In this phase, the elbow is in pronation and arm is in internal rotation. Mid pull through is marked by the humerus being the perpendicular to the body. From early pull through the late pull through, the motion of the shoulder transitions into horizontal adduction and extension. The arm exits the water at the region of the hip, leading with elbow during the late pull through phase. The arm is then brought from back of the body to the front and elbow motion transitions from flexion to extinction during the recovery phase. Pain occurs most commonly at early to mid pull through. Second, arm exit to mid recovery. By perceiving the arm and trunk motion, one can determine whether an individual is in pain. Swimmers present with pain usually will seek the path of least resistance, which results in the decrease in the efficiency of the arm stroke by shortening the pull through phase on the painful side. The easiest way to see this is that painful arm will have an increase in stroke count. Individuals present with implant rotator cuff muscle tend to have a greater angle of arm entry as well as pull through to prevent the impingement of the supraspinatus. The coupled motion of wide pull through and hand entry combined with the trunk, rotation increases the chance of humeral adduction and hyperextension. This position compromises the integrity of shoulder joint, which may even cause further damage to the surrounding structures. Here you can see the freestyle or the front drop. As we can see step by step, the arm are used one at a time to pull the swimmer's body through the water. The stroke is also known as freestyle. It gives maximum speed with the minimal effort. Freestyle swimming include a prone horizontal face down position, flutter kicks and alternate arm Movement help create the thrust needed to push the body. The legs move alternately with quick and compact kicks under the water, keeping the feet pointed. Arms are used to pull the water back alternately. While one arm pulls the water from an extended forward position towards the hip, the other recovers outside water from the hip to the extended forward position. Breathing. It's done sideways when an arm is brought out of the water for recovery. The head comes out of the water sideways with the shoulder as the air inhalation happens quickly. Air is exhaled inside the water itself to ensure enough intake in fractional time of inhalation. The front call is the fastest and the most efficient stroke in swimming because first, a drag is minimum during the arm recovery because of the pointed hands. Second, there's always one arm pulling the water. Now coming on to the breaststroke biomechanics. Breaststroke is the oldest of all competitive strokes. Breaststroke is the most unique swimming style there is where the arm never exists the water. Similar to butterfly, the stroke uses arms bilaterally to generate the propulsion. However, most of the force generated for propulsion arises from the lower limbs. The issue with truncal rotation as well as humeral hyperextension is minimal. Thus, there are rarely any shoulder injuries. The stroke begins with arms stretched in front of the body with forearms and pronation. The pull through phase is initiated by the flexing of elbows as well as the supination of both forearms. Back into the neutral position, the adduction of both arms made at the mid chest to thrust it forward during the recovery phase. 
Similar to the butterfly, the trunk is pivoted about the hips. During the pull through phase, the body and the head is lifted up from the water for the swimmers to breathe. The lifting of the trunk also allows the increase in the duration of pull through and consequently increase the arm force propulsion. The breaststroke kick is described as a symmetrical whip like motion of both the lower limbs. The kick begins with both the external rotation and abduction about the legs with knee flex. As the leg reaches the outmost part of the abduction, the knees and the feet will also externally rotate. To create the force of propulsion, the whole lower limb on the sides are adducted and internally rotated symmetrically. To ensure even distribution of the force at the midline of the body, main muscle group include adductors, adductor longus, pectoralis major, deltoid, bicep, and tricep, latissimus dorsi, and as well as soleus and gastrocnemius. Note, the natural lifting of the trunk in breaststroke decreases the likelihood of lower back muscle strain. Swimmer with painful shoulder shown the trend of increased muscle activity of both latissimus dorsi as well as the subscapularis. There is also a not notable decrease in the activity of teres minor leading to excessive internal rotation, which increase the likelihood of structural impingement. Moving on, here we can see the breaststroke. It's the gliding position. Then the arm extend forward, hands are pulled to the side. Legs are drawn up for a frog kick or flutter kick. The face is placed in the water as the kick started. As you can see, the toes, toes are pointed outward from the body which gives a thrust, arms are straightened as kick ends, then return to glide. This type of swimming stroke also occur in prone position. In this stroke, the body is forced into inclined position from a horizontal position to do the movement. Frog-like kicks and simultaneous hand movement inside the water helps the body glide through the water. Legs are bent and kicked out inside the water to propel the body forward. The stroke-like movement, whip kick, happens under the water. Arm movement are symmetrical and simultaneous. An arc is made by the hand from extended forward position to below the chest. But unlike the freestyle stroke, hands move in a straight line during recovery phase. Breathing is done at the end of propulsion when hands are beneath the chest and the head is above the water surface. The breaststroke is the slowest one amongst all the five types of swimming stroke. Generally, beginners are taught this technique first since the head is above the water for the most of the time. Moving on to the backstroke biomechanics. Backstroke uses the reciprocal unilateral movement of the arms to achieve the means of propulsion. The uniqueness of the swimming style is that it is performed supine. Similar to freestyle, the shoulder is vulnerable to injuries. Thus, the relationship of position between the arm and body is important to know. In the beginning of the pull through is marked by the arm extended above the head, entering into the water. During the space, the elbow joint is locked in extension and the arm is fully internally rotated. The arm and hand is then pressed down towards the feet by mid pull through. The elbow is flexed and the arm is rotated to neutral position and it becomes perpendicular to the body as well as the direction of motion. During the late pull through, the arm again straightens out of the fully internally rotated before exiting the water. The arm remains straight throughout the recovery phase where the arm exits the water and extended above the head for re-entry. To maximize performance, the synchronization of the trunk and arm during pull through is vital. The humerus is roughly 30 degrees below the surface during pull through and similar axial rotation of the trunk should also occur. It is common for a mature swimmer tend to lag behind in trunkal rotation which causes rotator cuff impingement. 
you can see the backstroke or the bracteral stroke. The position is in supine, arms coming out of the water and reach backward one at a time. Legs move from hip in a flutter kick, hand in water pulls to the body. As you can see, the arms are moving to and fro. The backstroke is the only type of competitive stroke on the back. The head is in the neutral position facing up. It is very similar to the front curl type except for one major difference. The back faces down. Legs do flutter kick with quick and compact movement. Arms are used to pull the water beneath the back such as the body moves backward competitively. Backstroke is the third pastor behind butterfly and front. The breathing is free from movement in this type of swimming stroke as the head never goes inside the water. The biomechanics of the butterfly stroke. Butterfly utilizes bilateral movement of the arm to provide means of propulsion as compared to unilateral and reciprocal pattern of freestyle and backstroke. During the stroke, the swimmer's body is placed in a S shape with the upper body pivoting up and down about the hips. Compared to freestyle and backstroke, where the body rotates in its central axis. When both arms enter the water, they are internally rotated as well as fully extended. Arms pronated the upper body, then presses down to generate increased dynamic motion. To propel the swimmer's body forwards, as a result of the body movement, the lower limb saving upwards. As pull through begin, the arms then externally rotate so they are perpendicular toward the path of the motion. Elbows flex whilst the body pivots upward and the lower limb swing down. The hand enters into internal rotation once again as it reaches the late pull. Until the re entry of the arms into water. The position of the arm remains in the same. The hand should just graze the surface of water during recovery phase. And no, not to overemphasize the swinging of the arms. The shoulder is the most susceptible to injury during the early pull phase. The pressing down of the body plays a key role in the severity of the injury as the arm is forced into humeral hyperextension as it lags behind the central axis of the body. During a mid pull through, it is common for the swimmer to forcefully arch the back to increase the upward pivot of the trunk. This should potentially stress the deep muscles of the lower back. Here, as you can see, the butterfly too. As hand enter the water, shoulder wides apart, legs move in a fish tail or dolphin kick. Arms move upwards and downward. Head breaks water as arms push back. Shoulder rotate brings arms around. It's more similar to like a, a dolphin. It goes up right the water, outside the water, then comes back. Moving on. The butterfly strokes involves a prone position. It is quite exhausting and strenuous relative to other type of swimming strokes. In this stroke, the body executes wave-like movement, moving chest and hip up and down the water surface. The legs undergo dolphin-like motion, which means both the legs stay together and straight as you kick them in the water. The arms movements are symmetrical again, tracing and hour glass 
motion under water they start from an extended forward position to beneath the chest toward the hips breathing occur while recovery when both the head and chest are lifted above the water the butterfly stroke is one of the most difficult stroke to master the undulation dolphin kick and arm movement are all not so easy to learn it is very tiring and therefore not usually used for recreational or fitness swimmers it is only used in and competitive swimming and it is a very difficult stroke moving on to the prevention posture and equipment correcting imbalance stretching posture an aquatic athlete are often thought to have bad posture rounded shoulder kyphosis forward head pose position proper swimming posture can decrease the stress of shoulder equipment can aid or hinder shoulder strain and performance here as you can see the poor posture with the forward head back with kyphotic no ladosis knees are in fixed flexion see the you guys you can see the good posture it is totally upright neutral the poor posture here you can see the forward head rounded shoulder the sway back weak abdominal muscles the muscle imbalances strengthen the adductors and the external rotator supraspinatus deltoid infraspinatus teres minus trapezius here you can see the exercises to improve the rotator cuffs as you can see the internal external rotation as you can see the rowing by thraband abduction to increase the muscle strength it is necessary to have equal strength and the equal proportion in both of the hands so that there should be no muscle imbalance the stretching static passive stretching versus dynamic stretching static stretching used to stretch muscle with the body at rest gradually lengthen the muscle hold of 30 second to 2 minutes proven to be determined to athletic performances neuromuscular inhibitory responses reduce strength for up to 30 minutes decreases power by 5% important in explosive activities does not prevent injuries we always use active stretching before a game before a swimming competition in order to not get fatigued the dynamic stretching stretching muscle with the body in motion activate the muscle joint in connective tissue prepares the body for exertion and performance increase blood flow and oxygen to tissue increase power flexibility and range of motion muscles in motion do not receive neuromuscular inhibition most efficient when it is sport specific do's and don'ts of stretching static stretching decreases athletic performances does not prevent injury and help to decrease stress and tension dynamic stretching increases power flexibility range of motion and athletic performance increases the blood flow and oxygen to the tissue it should be a sport specific now moving on to some major swimming injuries we will be classifying the injuries according to the strokes the common injuries of swimming the swimmer shoulder the shoulder is a joint most commonly affected by swimming injuries or overuse a slight injury and micro trauma can cause shoulder become unstable and lead to shoulder pain and tendonitis shoulder injuries may include the ro rotator cuff impingement pressure on the rotator cuff from the part of shoulder or scapula as the arm is lifted bicep tendonitis is a painful inflammation of the bicep tendon and shoulder instability 
Here, as you can see, the root attack of injury, as you can see, the tendon, the bursa, and the root attack of lesion. Pinching and irritation of tendon and root attack of tears are among shoulder problems that become more frequent with the age. Bicep tendonitis. As you can see, there is an inflamed lower tendon. The labrum tear. A more severe form of swimmer shoulder if left untreated can result in a tear of the labrum. This injury is very serious and always requires surgery. From labrum tears are expected to complete a physiotherapy regimen in order to aid in recovery and prevent muscle atrophy. According to Dreyer, different kind of tears require different exercise regimen. Though those recovering from surgery usually start with a range of motion exercises before moving to strengthening. In serious cases, can cause swimmers to be out of the water for a four to six months. Though, if caught before a tear occur, a period of recovery lowers drastically. A tear of labrum is the late stage of swimmer's shoulder and can often, though not always, be prevented by techniques mentioned above. Here, as you can see, the labral tears outside the glenoid lob labrum. To the surfaces, as you can see, the, the surface is inflamed. Moving on to the hand and wrist. The hand and wrist injuries are relatively uncommon in swimming. They include finger sprains, fractures from contact with wall and overuse injuries of the elbow, and risks such as sprain, strain, and tendonitis. Finger injuries are should, should be evaluated by the athletic trainer and referred to a sport medicine physician. If a fracture is suspected, overuse injuries are usually the result of overtraining and poor swimming mechanics. These injuries should also be evaluated by athlete trainer treatment may include time out of the pool, rehabilitation and refer to a sports medicine specialist if indicated. Moving on to the neck injuries, the breathing technique is very important aspect of the optimizing your swimming performances. See, it can be hard thing to bear in mind as usually we are more concerned about getting air than we are about to how we get it. But it is an, another example of repetitive motion that gradually lead to pain. Most common cause of neck pain in swimming is extending the neck too far when coming up for air. So that the most important thing to be aware of if you want to prevent neck injuries. While it may be instinctive to stretch our heads as far as we can, it is better to come up just far enough to get the air you need. Neck rolls and stretches outside the pool are also a great way to prevent the injury. Here you can see the sternocleidomastoid trigger points, which gets disrupted while swimming.
the lower back pain caused by swimming this is usually a result of relying too heavily on the butterfly stroke as we have seen the butterfly stroke is one of the most physically exerting exercise in swimming and is mainly used by competitive swimmers this of course means that it is mainly used by people who can swim quite frequently which is why it leads to pain over time the reason the lower back is affected is that unlike most other strokes people do not turn to the side to come up for air when doing the butterfly they remain position with their torso parallel to the bottom of the pool and lift their heads directly up to prevent this from occurring is to work out the back muscles to strengthen the back muscles to stretch them before and after the swimming we can you for the use a cat and camel we can use a child pose and we can go for further stretches now moving on this is lead pull through and recovery phase which can lead to a lower back pain while the butterfly stroke lower body injuries knee injuries that involves the tendons and ligaments in back breast strokes knee are common breast strokers may also experience hip pain back problems including lower back disc problems or another problem at the junction between the spine and pelvis termed as spondylolisthesis often swimmer demonstrate tremendous flexibility or joint laxity which can be normal other repetitive injury include inner knee problems and hip problems from breast stroke pain Here as you can see the swimmer's knee the primary cause of swimmer's knee is a breast stroke which is why it is also known as breast stroke's knee during breast stroke the leg whips out helping to increase the speed of the body through the water like a frog kick the tension increases during the kicking phase on the medial collateral ligament as the knees are extending outward the hips are externally rotated symptoms of the swimmer's knee are a general knee pain the inflamed or fatigued knee tissue swelling over the knee region a sharp pain when placing the knees under stress a long term breast stroke swimmer may, may become knock kneed interesting fact 25% of all swimmers injuries are related to the knee as here you can see the breast stroke in the frog leg position the knee is used the mcl is involved which can lead to a swimmer's knee or the breast stroke's knee the spine neck and back injuries are the second most common behind the shoulder swimming put significant stress on the spine specifically rotational stress on the cervical and thoracic spine common diagnosis includes sprain strain spondylosis and disc derangement bulge herniation stenosis etc here as if you can see the compressed nerve root due to disc protrusion 
What a compressed neural neural root can do, it can give you a tingling sensation to your dumb tongs, the nerve roots ending through your limbs, to the proximal limbs and the distal limbs. As with the shoulder, these injuries should be evaluated thoroughly by a team athletic trainer or a sports medicine specialist or a physiotherapist to assess the problem and develop an appropriate treatment plan which usually include time out of the pool, rehabilitation and medication. Thus, injuries predominantly caused by improper form, repetitive movement, and overexertion of the joints. The treatment and prevention to the injury. To prevent injury, it is important that your training should be balanced to include the following. Suppose the resistant training improves and promotes muscle growth and may increase the strength of the ligament, tendons, joints, cartilage, and thus increases the muscle strength and endurance. It is also aids in correcting muscle imbalances. Example of resistance training include weight training, isometric training, isokinetic training. Moving on to the close tra stability training, it focuses on the muscle deep with the abdomen and the core, the back, Attaching to the spine or pelvis, if the core muscles are weak, the larger muscle of the body have to work harder. And thus, this could result in an injury due to overload and muscle imbalances. It is very important to use the muscle in the right way. A strong core will always improve a good posture and reduce the muscle imbalances, balance and alignment in the water, resulting in a more streamlined position and greater swimming efficiency. It keeps the posture upright throughout phases. The CrossFit training. To distribute the load of training among various body parts, thus reducing the risk of injury. For example, a swimmer may also do two weight sessions in a week and at two runs a week. Cross training helps you develop your entire body while distributing the load. Thus, reducing the risk of injury furthermore. Supplementing with weight-bearing exercise is very important for maintaining the optimal bone length. As you, I can give a few examples of the CrossFit training are HIIT training, the step ladder, the jumping, plyometrics, Chin-ups are all the example of the crossfit training. How can swimming injuries be prevented and treated? Communication among athlete, parent, coach, and medical professional is critical to both swimming injury, prevention, and successful recovery. There is a vital role of an athlete, coach, and parent, the medical professional, to evaluate the injury, to evaluate the weaknesses, to rule out the things which are helpful to prevent and successful recovery. Use good stroke technique, lessen repetitive strokes that are causing the overuse injury, perform core strengthening and cross training exercises as a part of pre and early session routines. Consider alternative training technique rather than training through an injury. You should keep a rest. Once you get all well, then get back to the training and for the further evaluation and treatment. Use period of rest to recover. Focus rehabilitation efforts on rotator cuff and subscapular strengthening. For most shoulder injuries and pelvic and hip strengthening, exercises for hip and knee injuries, Speak with a sport medicine professional or a physiotherapist therapist or an athletic trainer if you have any concern about injury or prevention strategies. 
the athlete should return to play only when clearance is granted by the healthcare professional the neck injuries the treatment can be take several days out of the pool and substitute with cardio trial and training stretch your neck and shoulder several times a day to loosen up the surrounding musculature you should relieve the muscles first and go for the range of motion then strengthening the preventions can be strengthen the neck muscles by completing neck extension and shoulder rolls exercises Work on your form during clip turn to avoid over extension. The rotator cuff injury is the most common injury. The treatment is followed by icing your shoulder for ten minutes twice daily, especially following activity. Do a few days of adrenaline cardio training to allow the inflamed tendon to heal. The prevention is to avoid training. with tired muscles avoid sudden increases in training volume or intensity limited use of kickboard to avoid straining the shoulder muscle check with a coach on your stroke form to determine if impact friction may lead to shoulder problems rotator cuff is the most common muscle which is injured in the swimming and is it is the most common muscle used in the swimming the lower back pain in butterfly stroke the treatment will be followed by rest for 2 to 3 days and limit the amount of training you devote to the butterfly stroke heat the affected area to help the lower back muscle relax we usually relax the muscle in the initial stage and do ice the initial stage to avoid the inflammation and swelling then followed up by the heat to reduce the muscle spasm relieve the pain then thus followed by the range of motion exercises then over the strengthening of back and few stretches are performed the prevention would be like strengthening the back muscle to take pressure of the spine by completing squat and deadlift exercise the compound movement hip thrust etc keep your back flexible by stretching after every workout and before the game as well the breast strokes or swimmers the treatment which is going to be switch to the other stroke allowing the major knee ligament to heal we ice the medial knee for 10 minutes twice daily especially following the exercises and also we can use apply a trap bandage over the injured area prevention would be like be sure to warm up and cool down before and after workout we can perform a various plyometric drills hops maintain variety in different stroke you practice in order to avoid the repetitive stress to the same soft tissue avoid excessive rotation of the hips in the training here as we can see in the swimmer's knee the frog leg position is used so the chances of mcl ligament is to get inflamed is very much so by preventing the swimmer's knee we can do few exercises that can be beneficial for the breast stroker's knee the rehabilitation and exercises most of the time various injuries in a swimmer is caused by a bad posture of swimming style or wrong swimming pattern or incorrect breathing pattern or imbalance of muscle or lack of pre and post stretching of muscle the pain develops and they seek for help rehabilitation of those injuries are required for them the shoulder the rehabilitation in shoulder in early stage isometric or static shoulder exercises performed to decrease joint injury increase subacromial space and strengthen shoulder muscle 
patient are required to do the exercise at least twice a week the rotator cuff exercises first back of the hand wall press the supraspinatus muscle the method is to press the back of the hand into a wall at approximate 30 degree of abduction the purpose is superior calf tendinopathy second external rotation and neutral press the muscle includes infraspinatus teres minor Resting external rotation by pressing the back into a wall with the arm bent at ninety degree. Purpose is to posterior superior tendinopathy. The belly press muscle subscapularis teres major method placing the hand against the belly, elbow and wrist in line, and push the belly in purpose. Anterior superior calf tendinopathy. The duration of these exercise will be three to five sets, ten repetition, fifteen to thirteen second plus. as you can see the patient is internally and externally rotating the arms prone warm by arm lift it is an isometric exercise the muscle is commonly used in lower trapezius and deltoid the method is lying on your 